Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over the early voting per state that is at least somewhat competitive in the 2024 presidential election and how the electoral map would look like based off of the early voting data that we are receiving and I will be using NBC News to track all the early voting percentages. But before we get started, make sure you guys are subscribed, click the bell so you don't miss out my content, press like button, share this video if you're interested, don't forget we do have memberships, you can find the links that in the description section. So we're even going to be taking a look at some red solid states as well because obviously it's early voting so it will be closer than usual. So let's start off with Nevada. Let's begin with this state. Currently there are roughly 6,686 mail-in and in-person voting that have been casted in total. And as of right now, Republicans have the advantage in that aspect as well and also in the mail-in ballots requested. There have been roughly 474,000 mail-in ballots requested and the Republicans have an advantage. As you can see right here, they're currently at 40% in the mail-in ballots requested to the Democrats 25%. So Republicans do have a lead in Nevada's early voting in both the mail-in requested and the votes that have already been casted. So they will take the state's six electoral votes. Obviously on election day things will drastically be different. They will change. But as of right now, Republicans are having the lead in Nevada. And if you take a look at the votes that have already been casted already, 48% for the Republicans actually expand their margin to the Democrats 26%. So it gets even better for Republicans when you take a look at that. So right now, Donald Trump is in a good position, but keep in mind, this is the early vote, so things can change one way or the other. It could get better for Kamala or it can get even better for Donald Trump. We just have to wait and see. And now, as for the next state, it's going to be Arizona, in which there have been roughly 41,000 mail-in and early in-person votes casted combined in total. Republicans are leading in the state of Arizona just like they are in Nevada in terms of the early votes that have already been casted. The Republicans are at 49% in terms of the early votes by both mail and in person included. They are both uh, together and Democrats are trailing at 29% similar to the margins in Nevada. And now as for the other side in which mail in ballots requested, uh, they're having currently a little over 3 million mail in ballots requested and Republicans still lead but by a smaller margin of just 3%. That's the advantage at 36% to the uh, Kamala Harris's 33%. And now what's really confusing me here is the large other votes, like there's 31% with the other vote, which kind of makes no sense to me. Uh, if someone can explain that in the comment section down below, I don't get why there's a large uh, other vote in a number of these states. It's not, it's not just Arizona. It's a number of these states with a large other vote share, just like North Carolina as well, which we would get to later. But yes, Donald Trump is leading in the early vote in both of these states, Nevada and Arizona, looking good for him. And then as uh, at least better than in 2020, obviously he will uh, make improvements because this is uh, a more favorable year for the former president. And I would say less so for the Democrats, especially Kamala Harris, who in polls, in terms of polling data, she is polling worse than Hillary Clinton, who obviously, as we all know, lost to Donald Trump. So if she's polling worse than someone who lost to Trump in Hillary Clinton, then what makes you think she will do better than Hillary Clinton? which would result in a loss, which is why I think Trump is realistically favored. And you take a look at the poly market betting odds. I don't want to get into that. We can make that into a separate video. But Donald Trump is actually skyrocketing in his lead. He, I believe he now leads in like every single swing state, but that will be in another video. And now Texas Democrats are actually barely leading by three points in both the votes that have already been casted and also the mail-in ballots requested. Now, this is not really shock. Obviously, Democrats are expected. Uh, to do better in terms of the early vote rather than election day voting. This is completely normal. But Kamala Harris is currently at 48% in terms of the, the votes that have already been casted. Uh, 86,000 total have been cast already. Donald Trump trailing at 45%. Now, this state has a smaller other vote share, which is different from Arizona or North Carolina. I don't really get why those states have a uh, large other vote. And she's also at 48 to 45 with the mail-in ballots requested. Uh, these are the exact same percentages in the state of Texas. So she will be barely winning this state with the uh, early votes for both the ballots that have already been counted and also the mail-in requested. This is not a surprise. Donald Trump is expected to do better, obviously, on Election Day, which would most likely hand him 
uh, Texas is 40 electoral votes, I believe. And now as for Florida, uh, Donald Trump is also trailing Kamala Harris, just like he is in the state of Texas. 44% for Harris. There have been a total of a little over 700,000 million and early in-person votes that have been casted already. Donald Trump's at 36%. And this also, once again, has a large other vote share, which I just don't understand if someone can explain that to me. I think a lot of people are confused as well. 20% here uh, with the other vote. I don't understand that. And you take a look at three, a little over 3 million million ballots that have been requested. Ka Kamala Harris and the Democrats also lead in terms of registered Democrats at 42%. The advantage, the difference is 7% to Donald Trump's 35% in terms of the mail-in ballot requested uh, in the state of Florida. Kamala Harris is slightly winning this state with the early vote, but this should be no surprise as obviously early vote is expected to go in favor of the Democrats. Donald Trump eventually will catch up as we get closer to Election Day or literally on Election Day as well. And now we move on to the next state, of Georgia, which in terms of the mail-in and early in votes, in-person votes that have been cast already, roughly 344,000. Kamala Harris barely leads by three-point advantage at 48% to Donald Trump's 45%. And as for the mail-in ballots that have been requested, that's roughly the the number is 271,000. The Kamala Harris actually expands her lead with the requested ballots, with 58% of that vote shared to Donald Trump's 34. Percent, But we're specifically taking a look at the early in-person votes that have already been casted instead of the ballots requested. Therefore, Kamala Harris is still winning Georgia, but by a narrower margin of just three percentage points. Now, we expect Donald Trump to possibly take the lead, obviously, as we get closer to Election Day. But this should be no surprise to people as Democrats always lead, obviously, early on. And if they don't lead early on, that, that's actually scary for the Democrats. But Donald Trump... And you recently years past, especially in 2020, did not like early voting. In fact, he himself literally in this election voted early instead of literally, uh, you know, bashing, er, er, you know, voting early, which he usually typically does. But now he's trying to change the messaging and change the strategy to get out the vote early, apparently, because he always loves voting only in person on election day. But now he's obviously changing up the strategy and he himself voted early early, which is kind of odd, not really what you, you know, hear from Donald Trump. But yes, uh, Kamala is barely winning Georgia with the early voting. She does have that advantage. No surprise here. And also, the state of Georgia had a record number of turnout more than, I believe, any other election, even more than 2020. And 2020 was supposed to have the highest turnout out of any other election. Now, Georgia uh, surpassed that overwhelmingly, I believe, like, by 50% even more. In 2020, on the first day of early voting in the state of Georgia, I believe they had like 150,000 uh, ballots casted, and now it's up to like 300,000 in just the first day, extremely high turnout. And also one thing to keep in mind is that in this election, roughly 10% of the black vote is actually down for Kamala Harris, which shows good signs in favor of Donald Trump. And usually, if you were to see higher turnout in an election, it would typically favor Democrats. But because the black vote is down by 10 points, I do think that means that maybe higher turnout goes in favor of Donald Trump, which is kind of odd, but I do think that might possibly be a realistic scenario. And then as for North Carolina, 63,000, actually close to 64,000 mail-in and early in-person votes have been casted, and that favors Kamala Harris, no surprise here. Also, this state has been affected by a hurricane, just like Florida, so maybe that could affect the votes. I'm not sure how that would impact this race, maybe in favor of Kamala or the other way around in favor of Trump. But she's at 38% with the registered Democrat votes, and Donald Trump's at 27%. Now, this is what I don't understand. There's 35% of the vote going to another candidate, which makes no sense, in my opinion. I still don't get that. And then as for the mail-in ballots requested, there have been currently 357, if you round up, 100,000 mail-in ballots have been requested, obviously going in favor of Kamala Harris. The numbers are exactly the same. So she's also winning the early vote in North Carolina as well. Obviously, this does not mean she's going to win the state. This is no surprise. Early voting always favors Democratic support. And then as for Virginia, there have been currently 801,000 mail-in and in-person votes have been casted early on 53 percent is the advantage for Kamala Harris Donald Trump trailing at 38 percent in the state of Virginia now Republicans are actually doing good if you take a look at uh, the mail-in ballots requested as in almost every single day they actually keep gaining in terms of that 
uh, if you take the same thing goes for Pennsylvania as well, which we'll get to later. But the numbers actually do go better for Kamala Harris when you take a look at the mail-in ballots have, that have been requested. Her lead expands by just a couple points of 55% to Donald Trump's 34%. So in that aspect, things are actually looking better for Kamala Harris. And in terms of the mail-in ballots that have been requested, roughly a little over 1 million. So Virginia, in terms of the early vote, is favoring Kamala Harris. No surprise here. And then as for the state of West Virginia, I know this is a, a solid red state, but just like I mentioned earlier, the early voting is going to make solid red states look competitive, even though they won't be on election day. No surprise here. Uh, in terms of the uh, mail-in and early in-person votes that have been casted, uh, a little bit over 5,000, obviously. Kamala has the advantage with 46% registered Democrat and registered Republicans at 36%. This should not be a surprise to people. I just don't understand this large other vote share. Uh, but yes, Kamala is winning West Virginia with the early votes. Does not mean she's going to win it, obviously. This is how things go early on. But in this video, we're just taking a look at what if... The map, you know, what would what would the map look like based on the early voting? It's not going to look like this on election day. This is just a fun video scenario that I wanted to do. And then as for Ohio, there have been roughly 300 and 700 thousand million and early in-person votes that have been casted. Donald Trump has the lead, but it is closer than expected because obviously we have this is not election day. This is the early vote. We're about like 19 days out from election day. So this not, you know, sh should not be a surprise to anyone. Kamala's at 43% to Donald Trump's 50%. Now it's way closer. The lead for Donald Trump shrinks down to just 1% when you take a look at that mail-in ballots requested. Roughly 1 million and almost 300,000 mail-in ballots have been requested. And that's only a one-point lead for the former president. Doesn't matter. He's still winning the state of Ohio. And then we take a look at the state of Iowa. Just like I mentioned, obviously the state's going to go to Donald Trump by a comfortable margin, but the early voting is going to be different, in which there have been a little under 2,000 mail-in and early in-person votes that have been cast. Kamala Harris has a huge lead, no surprise here, 51% to Donald Trump's 28%. And she actually uh, shrinks her lead when you take a look at the mail-in ballots have been requested, but she still is winning. This also should not surprise anyone donald trump obviously will win this day comfortably on election day this we only been uh having early votes for like a few days now uh 187,000 mail ballots have been requested uh most of that numbers are favoring kamala harris so in terms of the early vote she is winning iowa obviously it's not going to be the same thing on election day vastly different and now we move on to some of these just vote states before we close out this video starting off with wisconsin in which kamala harris is also winning the early vote in this state as well, in which if you actually take a look at Election Day, Donald Trump was leading in Wisconsin up until 3 a.m., which all the mail-in votes got dumped in because of the COVID. You already know that. 267,000 mail-in and early in-person votes have been casted. Hurley's at 40% to Donald Trump's 19%. And I don't know why there's a 41% other vote share. It's just confusing to me. And the mail-in ballots requested are similar in terms of the numbers, but obviously there have been more votes uh, requested. Uh, mail-in ballots, 573,000. So she is winning Wisconsin early vote based off of just a few days here. Keep in mind, we literally have 19 days uh, out until election day, which things would be narrowed up way more than right now in favor of Donald Trump, as expected. And then as for Michigan, roughly 670,000 mail-in and early in-person votes have been casted. Kamala Harris has the lead with 56% of the vote share to Donald Trump's 35%. And the numbers shrink for Kamala Harris. It gets closer when you take a look at the mail-in ballots requested. But she still has the lead with 2 million mail-in ballots that have been requested. So she's also winning Michigan's early vote as well. We are just only a few days out. Things will 100% narrow up. So people on the right, uh, you know, worrying about these numbers. This should not shock anyone. Donald Trump very well can still win the election because I've been seeing people in my comments freaking out. And then as for Pennsylvania, the last and final state to take a look at the early vote before we end off this video, there have been roughly 631,000 mail-in and early in-person votes casted. Kamala Harris is doing tremendous in the state with the, you know, the, in, you know, early votes that have been casted. But when you take a look at the mail-in ballot requested specifically, Donald Trump is gaining every single day, just like he is similar to Virginia with mail-in ballots requested. He's leading like basically every single day with the requested mail-in 
ballots. So he's actually doing phenomenal in Pennsylvania, but you know, it confuses you when you take a look at the votes that have ever been casted. You see Kamala Harris, it looks like she has a big lead all of a sudden, but still, that's going to narrow up because the mail-in ballots have been requested. Donald Trump keeps gaming, and he's improving from 2020. You compare this to 2020, even though Kamala still has the lead in early vote in Pennsylvania, it should not shock anyone, but what you should take a look at is the basically day-by-day mail-in ballots requested. Donald Trump keeps, ga keeps gaining significantly, which is why I predict he will win this state. And literally, the polling averages from RCP also has Trump ahead and Pennsylvania as well, even the, the poly market betting odds. So you take a look at the mail-in ballots requested. Roughly almost 2 million of those have been requested. Her lead is at 61%, so it actually gets smaller when you compare these two. So she is winning Pennsylvania's early vote, but obviously uh, Donald Trump is expected to catch up. So 382 electoral votes for the vice president to Donald Trump's 156. This is the map based off the early voting as of today. This map should not shock anyone. Obviously, when we hit election day, things will look vastly different in favor of the former president, Donald Trump. So that's pretty much it. One last final reminder before I close out this video is to subscribe, click the bell so you don't miss out my content, press like button, share this video. Don't forget we do have memberships. You can find a link to that in the description section. That's pretty much it. Thank you everyone for watching.